Hi, it's Stephen Bruck with another messianic moment for you and you and you and you. And you. Uh, before we get started, please like the page if you do like it. Um, actually, like it if you don't like it anyway. Just I need likes and uh, share me out, and only do that, of course, if you do like what you hear. And please subscribe. Go to the right side of the screen, hit the little subscribe button, or if you're watching on the video, go to the bottom corner where my messianic moment logo is and click on that, subscribe. And uh, this way you'll get a notification whenever I send out a new blog. All right, so today, as you may have seen from the title, Apathy or Patience. Now, in many of my messages, I mentioned that I do not read the newspapers or listen to the news on TV. Actually, I don't really pay much attention to who's in Washington or what they're doing. Consequently, I have sometimes been accused of being apathetic. Frankly, if someone tells me they think I don't care, they're right. I don't care what they think. I do care about what's happening in the world. And there are times that I could just scream at the many people who just follow the crowd, running from one extreme to the other, like a pendulum going from one apogee to another and back and forth, and not really making any decisions or, or looking at the problems caused, but just trying to resolve a symptom. And when I see this happening as, well, for instance, with the recent gun control issues and the constant badgering of the president, not just the current president, but the past president. I mean, they even badger the candidate who never even became president. I mean, when I see all this and the crime and, and the societal issues, I just think to myself of how many times we are told in the Bible that we must wait on the Lord now, you may be asking, wait for what? And my answer would be, justice. I don't believe that we're going to receive an answer to the problems we face. But eventually, in God's good time, there will be justice served on the ones who are the cause of the problems. Now again, when I say I don't believe we're going to get answers to the problems, no, we may come up with our own answers to our problems, whether good or bad, whether they work or not. But as far as God's answer, I don't believe God's going to come down and, boom, solve the problem. But he will serve justice on those that cause the problems. That is waiting on the Lord for him to do what he knows he's going to do, what he is the only one who can fairly judge, and when he's ready to do it. And I want to use as an example King David, who was a man after God's own heart. Um, when Absalom, in 2 Samuel chapter 16 through about 23, when Absalom, his son, rebels against him, here's one of the worst things we could possibly imagine. Not only is your son rebelling against you, but he's going to kill you. He's killing his brothers and stepbrothers, and he's going to take over your job as king. All right, it's treason, technically. And when his own son rebels against him, David accepted this situation, and he waited on God, to make the decisions about what would happen. Um, and let's look at two examples of this, where David waits on God. Okay, so in 2 Samuel 15, 25, I'm not going to put anything on, because I'm just going to make this fast. Um, 2 Samuel 15, verse 25, they're taking the ark out of the tent of meeting and following David as he's fleeing Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And David says to Zadok the Cohen, take the ark of God back into the city. If I find favor in the Lord's eyes, he will bring me back and let me see it and his dwelling place again. But if he says, I am not pleased with you, then I am ready. Let him do to me whatever seems good to him. I mean, now there's an attitude of everything's falling apart in my life, but I'm going to wait to see what God wants to do about it. I'm not going to make any rash decisions. I'm not going to go nuts. I'm just going to trust in God. Trust in Him and faithfully obey Him, even if it's not something that I want to hear. Um, very next chapter, 2 Samuel 16, verses 11 through 12. Now David's leaving, he's running away as they're going through the territory out of Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem belonged to Benjamin, okay, which was the tribe of Saul, excuse me, the first king. So as he's going out, an old man who's a member of Shaul's family comes and starts throwing stones and cursing at him and calling him all kinds of things. Well, you know, David's servants say, let's go kill this guy. Just shut him up. 
But David says something different. David says, leave him alone. Let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. It may be that the Lord will look upon my misery and restore to me his covenant, blessing, instead of his curse today. In other words, that by David waiting on God and looking to see what God will do, instead of the curses of this Benjamite, he may restore the covenant blessings of God. And I could list many, many examples that are in the Bible telling us to wait upon the Lord, which is the same as saying, have hope that God will make everything right in the end. Okay, so I ask you, am I really apathetic because I don't care that much who's in charge or what the maddened crowds are screaming about? Or am I patiently waiting for God to act as God sees fit? My answer to you is that I am trusting in God to make things right in the end. I don't care that much for the news. I mean, it's always sad. It's designed to evoke emotions and fright and concern. And it's untrustworthy. Sorry, if you're in the news business, that's not my fault. That's your, your, your industry has done that to itself. And I really don't care who the president is, why or how he or she got there and what they want to do. All right? The United States government is not a racehorse. <laughs> and the worst thing that any president has done is to leave behind the programs he wanted to get done for the next president to sort out. So <clears throat> I've seen too many presidents. I'm a student of history. My undergraduate degree was in history. I, I've learned from experience. No, I'm not apathetic. I'm faithful. I'm faithfully waiting on the Lord to make things right. I'm faithfully hoping in God that I will be rescued from the Tsaurus we are all experiencing in the world. And I'm faithfully looking forward to the day when I will be in His presence. I'm looking forward. I'm looking past the trouble. I'm waiting on the Lord. I respect those who are advocates and trying to make a change for the better. Really, they, I do not deny that they have tremendous value in our society. I just ain't one of them. So, that's the message for today. I hope in some way it edifies and, and helps you to seek God more closely, to have more hope in Him. Again, please, like the page, share me out. Go to my website, MessianicMoment.com, MessianicMoment.com. Buy my books. If you like what you hear, you like my books. I guarantee it. But thank you so much for listening. Have a great day. Baruch Hashem.